don't want to do this. I know how that feels. I, I still feel that way sometimes. So, how many of you all have dreams? Let me see some hands. Just these many? Alright, how many of you all want your dreams to come true? Let me hear you instead of raising hands. Do you guys want your dreams to come true? Yes! Of course, everyone does. So, you know they say artists are some of the biggest dreamers. Um, so, I am here today to give you an insight of an artist's pursuit of dreams. <coughs> of how to not give up and persevere in the face of failure and get up and get going when, even when everything seems like it's not working out. So, um, I'm Agasa Singh and I sort of like following this motto in my life. Nothing beats persistence. Not genius, not talent, not education. So, let me tell you a little bit about myself. <clears throat> um, I come from a musical family and before I started speaking, I started singing. So, at an early age of 17, I started performing professionally all around the world. I've done about 200 odd shows internationally as well as nationally. Um, I've been a part of two reality shows on Indian television. Uh, the first one being India's Draw Star, the second one being MTV Angels Rock. Um, my Bollywood debut, Utopia, received so much love by you guys, and I'm so grateful. And um, I've also been a part of a pop debut with an international star called Ricky Martin for a song called Nente Paga. And I've done a few international brand campaigns, etc., etc. So all of this happened. This, this is what I've done. But it's, my journey has literally just begun. Um, so <coughs> there were obviously a lot of challenges that I faced um, in this journey that everyone does. I'm going to tell you the challenges an artist usually faces. My father, Arvinder Singh, uh, is an accomplished singer and music director and he's a self-made man. So he always encouraged me to sort of be ambitious and believe in yourself and work hard and struggle. Even though he's from the industry, he was always like, no, you have to stand up on your own two feet, both my parents. Um, one fine evening, Mika Singh, who is a family friend, happened to hear me sing. He was home. And he heard me sing and he was like, why don't you join my troupe as a female lead singer? Now, I know what a lot of you might be thinking, or what anyone thinks when I say this. Dad ke dost ke, to jugaad lag ke, connection ho gaya or kaam ho gaya. I mean, that's friend, so there was a connection, so that's how she got the work. I mean, Jagar, yeah, that is true to some extent because connection and the fact that Mika Singh was at home and he was listening to me sing was because he was dad's friend. But, you know, connection, Jagar, all of this can get you only to a certain point, and after that, it is your own talent. It is you who has to prove yourself. So, I'd like to believe that he saw some potential in me and he asked me to join his band. Now, this is like a dream sort of job, right? He's, he was one of the most successful singers at the time and he's asking me to join his band and tour all around the world and sing. And so did, right? Yes, I've got it, I've done it. Not really. Because, you see, I, I was in a very uh, sheltered upbringing growing up. As many of us are, our parents love pampering us. I was very pampered. My school was right next door and um, I hadn't really gotten out much. I hadn't seen the world as such. Um, there was this comfortable bubble I was living in. I had just started college. So I felt like, also I, I didn't feel like I was able enough because I didn't have any formal training. I didn't know if I could, I was capable enough of joining this band. 
So, um, should I take this opportunity, which is a huge opportunity, and sort of get out of my comfort zone? I was just 17, by the way, 16 and a half, 17. Should I get out of my comfort zone, join this band? And this band consisted of like about 12 odd men with all of them 10 years or older. So, this was the first challenge. This is always the first challenge. There's a comfort zone, and even though there's a big opportunity, you, you have this. Should I, should I not? What may not be for me? And I live, I just got into college. But I made a decision and I took the leap of faith and I said, let's go. I said yes to him. Now I was so eager to learn and so excited to come on board that I also wanted to explore every aspect of life events, right? There's apart from seeing what else happens. So, over excitement and I was like, yes, I sort of took on a lot of added responsibilities. So logistics coordination became the cornerstone of my earlier career. Now, obviously, I tried to help wherever I could, whenever I could. And it wasn't really an easy task because, okay, imagine this, right? You're, you have an international flight, it's far away destination and um, you sort of travel also contrary to popular belief, not business class, economic class, you travel, you reach the destination and it's an endless travel and you're just tired and you want to go back and you just want to rest before you go up to perform in the evening. But I would reach the destination and then I'd just be like, ah, I'm going to sleep. But no, you have to have taken up all these responsibilities. So I had to get there, check people in and coordination and sound check and what time is this going to happen and what time is that going to happen and go to the sound check, do the sound check and then come back and and I'm check. So I needed time to get ready. There was no time. Get up on stage, look good and sound good and sing and give a great performance and then come back and sometimes just the bad thing there was no rest. You had to go do the same thing again, catch another flight, check people and so I realized this is this is this was a difficult life. It was not what I imagined when I got the opportunity that, oh my God, I'm going to travel the world. And it's not as glamorous as, you know, a lot of artists say this, that it seems on the onset that it's it's such an amazing life. You're seeing the world. There's no time to see anything. You're just running around. There were moments where I was like, I just want to, I, I want to scream and just yell and just be like, I don't want to do this. I came here to sing. I just want to go back to my mom's arms and just get into my comfort zone, my college life, and you know, have fun. But I didn't. I realized that this is where your comfort zone is, and that's where the magic happens. So that's sort of the first challenge that everyone faces, is getting out of your comfort zone and not letting things get to you. Now, up next, India's draw star. I was offered this show called India Rasta and um, since I was gigging, I was I wouldn't wasn't able to take it up immediately. So I entered as a wild card. Now seven weeks of the show were done and I sort of entered it. Now when I got the show, you know the first thing you think is okay, I have to go and I have to sing and I have to perform and yes, let's do this. How difficult can it be? Except a few days into the show, when it started, I realized because I had entered this so late, the rest of the participants who were there for seven weeks have sort of already made their fan bases. The audiences had already chosen their favorites. And um, I was like, okay, I'm late in the game. So my first performance, I went in all down the bearing and I gave it my best and I came out and I was like, gasp. And then I saw the comments and the comments are like, oh my god, what is this girl doing in the show? Oh my god. I just like XYZ. Oh my god, why we don't need her? This one is my favorite. Oh my god, she should even not even be in the show. I mean, talk about rejection. Like, you give it your best and then this is what you get. I realized, and this happens, right? Instant rejection. Reality shows, there's one thing that it comes along with. 
Everything is instant in the reaction, which the audience doesn't realize sometimes. The artist is on national television. So if, if the audience likes you, there's instant love, right? Your social media is growing up, followers and, oh my god, I love you, and fans, and this and that. But on the other hand, if they don't like you, there's also instant rejection in your face. Now, even at that time, you're just, who wants to face that? I was like, fine. I, I, I want to go home. But then I realized national television such a huge opportunity. And I was like, okay, that's, I sort of avoided that, which is very difficult because it's in your face all the time. And I went on to perform, gave it my best and tried much harder. And week after week, finally I was so I was the only girl amongst eight boys there, and I reached top five, and I won the people's hearts. And till today, the amount of love I receive, the same people who were like, oh my god, we don't want you on the show, are like, oh my god, we love you. So, it's, you, you shouldn't let rejection get to you. I mean, it's obviously, it's hard, you can't help it. But, just stay strong, because, Rejection is nothing but a necessary step in the pursuit of success. So, cut to Angels of Rock, Empty Angels of Rock. This is a show where Sharmani Kolgare, you must have heard his name, Jasmine Sanders, Anu Sharmani, all three of them, very accomplished singers, very well known in the industry way more experienced than me and way more recognized. And then I got the show as well. And I was a young newbie, not recognized, hadn't had a Bollywood debut or anything. I realized that at this point, nothing can really prepare you for leveling, leveling up to this, apart from you giving it your best shot. In such cases, you're like, there's a sense of inferiority that just, even if the others don't do anything or say anything to make you feel like that, but you yourself are like, there's this, this, this self-doubt. What am I doing here? Am I even good enough for this? Like, will I ever be where these people are? Wait, should I even be on the show with these people? Do, do they even want me? These are the thoughts that were in my, in my mind and obviously it was, it was natural to feel like that. But you cannot let insecurity stop you from believing in yourself. Because, I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, who else will? So, you just have to sort of see them and instead of seeing, because, you know, in life, Every, every walk, every step of the way, there's going to be someone who's going to be better than, better at their job, better looking, or better anything. And you'll always feel like insecure, but you can do two things. You can see them as competition and let yourself let down, like I sort of did for a while. Or you can be like, see them, accept them as, these, these are my goals, this is what I want to be. So, you know, it's, it's not who you are that holds you back, it's who you think you are. You just have to always be positive. Up next was social media. How many of you all use social media? No, let's just hear somebody or ask something else. How many of you all use social media? It's not even like I can see anyone. One guy just started, welcome to the party. A little bit late. <laughs> So, let me ask that again. How many of you all use social media? Everybody, right? Everybody's on it. I'm sure you all must have heard, especially today when YouTube is so huge, so many YouTube stars. I cannot, I have to repeat it, I cannot stress enough on how important social media is for an artist and for otherwise to showcase their talent. Because the internet is such a huge place, you know this, but everybody is watching. And it sounds so scary, right? Everybody is watching, but it's really not. So, uh, I did this cover of, uh, do you know Yo-Yo Honey Singh? Of course you know. Do you guys know Yo-Yo Honey Singh? So, there was this song um, called 
brown drum and my friends and I were sitting one day and we sort of just we were having fun with the song and I sort of added a few rap portions to it and decided to put it up on YouTube. Now it was just for fun but that song, the views grew and word of mouth grew and somehow it reached Star Plus and the makers of Raw Star were like, oh we want this girl. And because of that cover that I made and so I asked my friends not to put it up first because I was like, it must be good. But you never know what works and what can be picked up. So that grew quite viral and that's why I got India's raw star and I just told you the rest of that story. So what I'm trying to say is, put yourself out there. I mean, we as a generation have so many opportunities. We just need to know how to make use of it. Social media is also like a land of opportunities, so to say. So, in closing, I'd like to tell you, failures are a part of everyone's life. Even the life that you see, you think someone's a star and you're like, wow, this life is come on. But everybody goes through failure. And you just, you just have to believe in yourself and sort of not give up. Just keep at it and don't let rejection and self-doubt get to you. Because if you know, if you don't believe in yourself, who else will, right? Most importantly, not a lot of people say this, but ask for help. There's always someone around you who's ready to help you in some measure. You just have to ask. <laughs>